Hi, I'm Timothy Pope, and this is China Buzzwords from Shanghai Eye, where we aim to decode and explain the economy and the business world. In this video, the big sell-off, what happened, why, and what the parallels are with other parts of the economy. If this week has taught us anything, it's that it's a really, really bad time to be in charge of an economy. Central banker has got to be the worst job in the world right now. If you do your job properly, the country's politicians take all the credit. And when things go wrong, people blame you even when it's not your fault. We saw a lot of this this week. When US jobs data came in unexpectedly weak, a whole lot of investors turned to the Fed and said, see, we've been telling you since March, it's time to cut interest rates. Now look what you've done. It's going to be a recession and we're going to sell all of our stock. Then people started panicking even more because Japan is raising interest rates and the US dollar started to fall against the yen. This is where a weird thing called a carry trade comes in. That's basically when people borrow money where the interest rates and the currency are low and then invest it in a high return product. In this case, they'd borrowed yen and bought Japanese and US tech stocks. When investors started thinking that the sky was falling on Monday, they rushed to unwind those investments. That's why the markets plunged and the Nikkei had its worst day ever. But if you want evidence that the big sell-off was an overreaction, just look at Tuesday when the Nikkei had one of its best days ever. And by the middle of this week, things are looking much more normal and a lot of the US recession worries have faded away again. This volatility tells us a few things. One, Global stock markets were probably a bit too high anyway, particularly big AI-linked stocks, which have surged on excitement over the development of this new technology without really having a clear way to generate profit from it. And the speed of Monday's falls also suggests that investors really knew it was time to clear away some of that froth. Two, in both the markets and the economy, there's a gap between sentiment and reality. And in a way, reality might actually be less important Consider this, the US economy is actually pretty strong at the moment. So strong that the Fed has been keeping rates high for ages to try and cool things down and fight inflation. But public sentiment over the state of the US economy is actually quite weak. High inflation and the rising cost of living makes people feel poorer. And the stronger that sentiment is, the more it impacts on the real economy and the markets in just the kinds of ways that we saw this week. And while China has largely dodged the market chaos, I'd argue that it suffers from the same problem. Economic sentiment is weak, and the perception that everything is getting worse might just be the biggest obstacle to making things better. As I said, running the economy is not a job I'd want.